Hi, everybody. We're back for another episode of 10 Questions With. Today, we're really excited about our guest. Um, he's one of the greatest Blue Jays of all time. 14-year big leaguer, 10 of those with the Blue Jays. 92-93 World Series. He won a Cy Young in 1996. Three-time All-Star. Uh, won 20 games with the Blue Jays. He was the bullpen coach in 2011 and 2013. Um, he's now working as a special assistant to the organization. One of the one of the best baseball guys you'll meet, Pat Hank. And Pat, thanks for joining us, man. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. It's good. All right. Well, real quick, just to run everybody through, uh, we we've asked for questions. So ten questions have come in. Um, we're going to ask them to Pat real quick here, but we just um, we want to say hello to everybody joining us across the country. Make sure you're all staying safe. Um, and please don't forget to support our from home to home, sorry, from home to your plate food drive um, initiative. You can find information on that on bluejays.com. So Pat, real quick, we're gonna get into it. If you're ready to go, you ready to go? Oh well, yeah, let's do it. All right, man. First question comes from Gustavo. Are there similarities in coaching professional baseball to coaching kids? Yes, I'll tell you what, keeping guys confident is very challenging no matter what level you are in baseball whether it's you know eight years t-ball or 18 year old minor leaguer or 25 year old big leaguer it doesn't matter baseball is a tough game mentally you fail a lot the biggest similarity for me is keeping guys confident keeping them how to maintain your confidence how to um, get over the hurdles and the humps those are very challenging things whether it's amateur game or, or professional game awesome man um next one comes from glenn um, he coaches the 16 new house league team and he has a hard time getting his players to commit to practice because they have school, their phones, and he says love interests. Uh, how do you, what are any strategies you have to keep players interested and focus on the game? Okay. I think the biggest thing here is trying to make it competitive, making it challenging. I'll give you an example. Roy Halliday and I played together and every day when we played catch, we played 21, two points for a face shot, one point for a shirt shot, anything in the shirt and chest, you got a point. Roy Halliday and I were big leaguers. I was a 10-year veteran when I came back and played with him at the end of my – or 13-year uh, veteran. And he was a veteran with Cy Youngs under his belt. And we were still playing this game to keep our practicing skills up, to keep our mental focus. So I would say suggest to make it competitive as much as you can. Make it challenging as much as you can. All right, Pat. Next question comes from Julie. Her 15-year-old son is playing elite travel baseball, and he's also playing elite hockey. Is it time for him to focus on one sport, in your opinion? You know, I'm a big multi-sport player. I believe in multi-sports. I played quarterback in high school, and I think quarterbacking helped me be a tougher pitcher on the mound. Therefore, I encourage kids to play multiple sports. And another thing, too, is your baseball muscles rest while your football muscles are getting used. And believe it or not, I played basketball through 10th grade. And it was, there are different sets of muscles that you use. So I think it's important to play multiple sports. I love a multi-sport athlete. Awesome, man. Uh, next question comes from Steven. Uh, talk about a coach you had growing up that meant a lot to you and what, what made him so good. So my father coached me all through Little League, all the way up until I made the varsity, actually. Um, we didn't know a ton about baseball. We learned by watching on TV. We learned by watching uh, big league games. And my, so my father was the most impactful. Why? Because he supported me. He was there for me. He encouraged me. He helped me with my confidence when I struggled. As I got to high school, I did have a great high school coach. Uh, he was there for 40 years. He really knew the game and really helped me with my uh, next level of playing and, and the, uh, the little nuances of the game. Awesome, man. Uh, next question comes from Christoph. Um, he's asking about when players join the Blue Jays organization, they're usually coming from college programs or high school programs, and they're pretty set in their ways, set in their routines. How, what are things that the, you do and, and other guys do in the organization to help that, you know, player that might be like, well, this is the way I want to do it, kind of buy into what we're doing with the Blue Jays? Okay, great question. This happens all the time. We get guys that come out of the draft. They're really good. They haven't failed yet. This is the key. So we don't touch them. Usually the first year, we don't touch them. Let them go. Let them play. Let them figure it out. Self-coach. Because in order to be a good big leaguer, you're going to have to self-coach at some point. But what happens is professional baseball creates humble pie. And they will come begging for help. Eventually, they will get some humble pie. Awesome. No doubt. Um, next question comes from Andrew. He was wondering if you could show us uh, the grips you used on uh, baseball um, from your playing career. Yeah, of course. So 
um, I held a four seam fastball. I went across the seams. And the key here is the space in between. You don't want to choke the ball. You lose a lot of velo and flexibility in your hand. You want to hold it so like it's like an egg. You don't want it to crack. That was my fastball, four seam. The curveball was a four seam curveball. The difference here is my wrist. My wrist is like this when I let go of the ball. With a fastball, it's like this. So you're seeing this if you're the hitter. And on a curveball, you're seeing this. And actually, with the curveball, all I'm doing is throwing and getting the ball to rotate over my fingers like this. So I held it on this seam right here. If you can see that. And I liked putting my thumb in the middle. Some guys liked having it on the seam. I didn't like that. So this is a trial and error thing. You have to keep trying different grips. One of my better pitches late in my career was a cut fastball. And uh, all I did was take the ball and offset it. All I did, see how I put the ball more on this side of my hand? And that created the ball to cut late by the batter's box. The last pitch I threw was a uh, changeup. I basically took my two power fingers, and I spread them out, and I tried to just throw as fast as I could. Remember, the key thing with all these pitches is the same arm speed, same tempo, same delivery. That's why the guys are successful in the big leagues. They can throw multiple pitches from the same slot, same tempo, and same uh, arm speed. That's awesome, man. Um, next question comes from Stuart. Um, what kind of mentality makes a good reliever and what kind of mentality makes a good starter? Relievers mentality is different because they're adrenaline junkies. These guys come in, they got the game on the line, their hearts pumping through their Jersey. They have to learn how to take a deep breath and slow the game down with starting pitchers. You have four days in between to think about it and to, um, you know, trust you, you start thinking about all these problems that you're having. You have four days, four days feels like eight days. Either way, you have to have a short memory, and that's the one similarity I would say with pitchers that are relievers and starters. But let's face it, almost every reliever in the big leagues is a starting pitcher at some point, so they're able to use those, those experiences to help them in the pen. So I think um, starters have four days in between to think about it. Relievers have to have a short memory and get it over quick. Awesome, man. Next question comes from Rob. Is there something that you wish baseball coaches as a collective group did better? Yes self-esteem, accountability, and confidence building. These are three things that we challenge. I challenge my kids when I was raising them. I challenge all the little league guys. You need to be accountable. You need to have confidence and you need to um, uh, be the best competitor. And these are things that I wish the coaches would teach because it's hard to stay confident in this game. Mike Trout fails all the time. Miguel Cabrera fails all the time. The reason they're so great is because they know they have a short memory and they can stay confident. It's a very challenging thing. As coaches, I think that's the biggest thing. All right, Pat, next question comes from Howie. Michigan and Canada have a lot of similarities, one being the weather. Uh, what, what were things that you had to overcome as a, as a young man getting ready for the draft? And, uh, you know, what advice would you give to kids in, in northern climates? So during the offseason, I used to run in my parents' house when I was in the minor leagues, believe it or not. I grew up in a colonial, and I would run the stadiums in the house. I did all my conditioning in the, in the indoors I didn't have a choice. It was just too cold to get outside. As far as throwing, January 1st, I started my throwing program, and it was always at the high school gymnasium. And I would use the varsity catcher at that time. Even through into my big league career, until I became a Florida resident, and long into my big league career, I did this every offseason. I threw five days a week at the high school and every other day on the mound starting January 15th. So it's, it's, it's doable. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, last question. Um, you know, it comes from Jack. So Jack is basically asking, he sees you as the bullpen coach. He sees that telephone call happen. He knows something's happening. Can you just kind of walk us through what that process is? Well, the great thing about the big leagues is the players are very polished. The coaching is, is very polished. So what happens is the players actually sense that they're going to get, the phone's going to ring. I start moseying on over to the phone. The players are starting to get a little antsy. And what happens when that phone rings, it's usually one of two things. It's usually get Smith up, get him ready for the fourth hitter and they'll name the hitter. Or at times it'll say, get, get Jones and Smith up and make sure Jones is ready for hitter four, make sure Smith is ready for the righty. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're constantly replaying that phone call back to the pitching coach or the manager to make sure you get it right. So he's, he, he, he blurts out the command and I blurt it back. And remember, it's loud. It's not easy to hear. So that's important to do as a bullpen coach. And then the rest is just hang the phone up, get these guys ready get them prepared for the, uh, the uh, competition that's going to happen real quickly. 
Awesome. Well, Pat, we can't thank you enough for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. It was great stuff. We hope it'll help the coaches all across the country. Thanks again. Okay, thanks for having me.